Hi again, everybody. It's Peter Rosenthal here, COM225, um, Inventory Management, Probabilistic Models, Video 2 of 2. So I hope, uh, hope all is well, and I hope that the first video was, uh, was worthwhile and kind of interesting. Of course, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to uh, get in touch with me. So this is the second model. Second model we're going to look at here, which is probabilistic, is known as the single period model. So this model is really interesting. It was developed several decades ago. And the model has to do with uh, limited shelf life products. So let's take a look at this, for example. So um, muffins. So we walk into Tim Hortons or we walk into our coffee shop all the time and we see the muffins there ready for us. And the question is, if you are the manager of that um, Tim Hortons or, or similar coffee shop, how many muffins do you produce in order to maximize your profit? So if you produce too many, and at the end of the day, you're going to have some leftover muffins that are unsold. And of course, you're going to have cost, which was, which is too high. And if you produce too few, then you're going to lose out on profit because uh, you lost sales. You didn't have enough muffins to, uh, to, to sell. So that's, a, that's one example of, of course, limited shelf life. Another example is news. So, um, in fact, this model was developed decades ago uh, used to be known as the newspaper boy problem, newspaper person problem, whereby they used to sell newspapers on the street. And a person would have a bag of newspapers and they would, uh, they would sell them to people on the street. And of course, if they had too many, if they had too many, then they would be stuck with the newspapers and they would have an extra cost. And if they had too few newspapers with them, then they would have uh, lost sales again. So it's, it's to maximize profits, they need to know the, the right amount. And the third idea, the third possibility, and there's many, there's many. The third, um, I guess, example, if you like, the third example is, um, is fashion items. So in this case, I use, for example, the Volkswagen Beetle, which has come in and out of fashion um, over the decades. And I think it, it, the first car came out in the 30s. And the latest car came out in 2018. And don't be surprised if you see another version of this, uh, an electric version or something, uh, 10 years from now. But the point is, how many cars should a Volkswagen dealership uh, stock such that he does not have too many that he's stuck with the inventory at the end of the year or too few such that he, he misses out on sales? So that's what this model is all about. That's what this model is all about. And, um, and let's talk about that model. So... Um, single period model is limited shelf life and as I said for example you have a bakery bake too many muffins and you're stuck with the inventory bake too few muffins and you lose the sale so the question is what is the optimal number of products in this case for example muffins to stock that's the question we want to know and we can do that by looking at two costs two costs the first one is known as the cost of shortage and the cost of shortage is, if you think about it, nothing more than incremental profit. Look at this. The revenue per unit minus the cost per unit. That is cost of shortage. The second is cost of excess, if we have too much. So the cost per unit minus any salvage value per unit we could get if we're stuck with it. So if we take a look at those two costs, if we look at those two costs, there's an easy formula here, a small formula, which is, of course, given to us on the formula sheet to calculate what a service level is based on these two costs, based on these two costs. By the way, these costs are not given on a formula. This is given on the formula sheet. So just be sure you know the difference between uh, the cost of shortage and the cost of excess. Perfect. So the best way to do this, given that information is, let's do an example, uh, and then we'll have a very good understanding how to solve this kind of problem. So the first one is distribution of, for demand for jelly donuts at a donut shop is shown in the following table. Determine the optimal number of donuts. How many donuts should we prepare, if you like, of bake uh, in dozens to make each Saturday morning, given the following cost. So we know that the cost is $3.20 per dozen. We know that the price is $4.80 per dozen. And we know that leftover donuts sell at half price, which is, guess what? A salvage value. So the question is, 
what is the resulting service level and optimal number of donuts to produce. So let's do that together. So to solve these problems, the first thing we need to do is notice there's a relative frequency. This comes from historical data and it's given to you in the problem. So over the year, let's say 10% of the time, we sold 19 dozens of donuts. And 2% of the time, we sold 29 dozens of donuts. And this is, um, this is where we get our relative frequency for our um, calculation, for our calculation. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take that information and we create what is a, known as a cumulative frequency. So all this is is that we take these values and we add them. So look at this. We start with the 0.01. We add 0.05, we get 0.06. We add 0.12 and we get 0.18. We add 0.18, we get 0.36 and so on until we add up. This has to add up to 1 because it is a frequency distribution. So we start with this information and we do our little cumulative frequency table here such that we can see what the distribution looks like. That's step one. Step two is we can then calculate our CS. Let's go back to the formula right here. We're going to calculate our CS and we're going to calculate our CE. Then we're going to get the service level and we'll be able to get the answer. So the first one is CS. So CS, of course, we'll go back to the problem here. We're going to calculate our CS and CS is, in this case, equal to revenue per unit minus the cost per unit, don't forget it's per unit, which equals, it's given as 4.8 minus the cost is 3.2, which equals 1.6. Perfect. 1.6. And then similarly, the cost of excess is equal to the cost per unit, same cost, minus the salvage value. The salvage value, and we have that too. So the cost is 3.2 minus, what's the salvage value? Look what it says. Leftover donuts are sold at half price. So what's the price? 3.2. Uh, sorry, the price is 4.8 rather. The price is 4.8. So therefore half of that is 2.4, which equals, we have it, 0.8. So we've got everything now. So let me clear this. Let me clear this. We've got our CE. We have our CS. We have everything we need to calculate next the service level. Service level. So we have our formula. Service level equals. Let me show you. There it is. Right? This is the formula that we want. Service level equals CS or CS plus CE, which equals 1.6 over 1.6 plus 0.8, which equals 0.667. Perfect. That's the service level right here. So then what we do, in order to answer the question, optimal number of donuts, the answer is the probability that just exceeds this service level we calculated. So look at this. We've got 0.63 does not quite exceed 0 0.667. 0 0.73 does, which means that is the first probability that just exceeds this number. And therefore the answer is 25 is the optimal number of donuts. That is the answer to the question, optimal number of donuts. The second question is, what is the resulting service level? The resulting service level is, guess what? 0.73. Why? Because 0.667 is the service level we get from these values. But remember, these values do not correspond exactly with 25. So the process is, we calculate our service level from the, from the values. We find the probability right here from the cumulative frequency that just exceeds the service level. In this case, it was 0.73. The corresponding, the corresponding um, demand was 25, that's our answer, and the resulting service level is 0.73. So I hope that's clear, and, uh, and of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask the question, and, uh, and I'll be happy to clear it up. So that's about it.
Thanks for listening. I do appreciate that. And um, I'll see you next week.